are doing today is pathogens and human illness. This is chapter 31, which we are going to start today. Okay, so you may open your textbooks for chapter 31.1 if you have the textbooks open in front of you. So let's start with a verse from the Quran which is related to the illness. Dua for good health. So this is the dua of Prophet Ibrahim which says, Why tamaritu fahuwa yashfin? Meaning when I'm sick, it is he who cures me. Okay, so this is a verse from uh, Surah uh, Shura verse 80 which says, uh, of course, Allah is the one who heals us, who gives us shifa. Though uh, uh, we go to hospital, we take the help of doctors and we undergo various treatments if this ailment is uh, more serious. Then, uh, of course, uh, though it is the treatment which we take from the doctor, it is Allah who gives us the ultimate shifa. And if we are doing self-care at home, we need to use the various uh, various treatments mentioned in the Quran, like uh, make the usage of honey, which is very good as a treatment, and also the black seed, cinnamon, and um, the various other things which are mentioned in the Quran, of course, dates and uh, uh, drink lots and lo lots of uh, zam zam. So all these are the treatments which are mentioned in the Quran, which we need to follow. Okay, so of course, uh, Quran ha is a very good guidance for us in every walk of life. Subhanallah. So uh, let's start with the objectives for this topic are to study the germ theory and how pathogens cause various diseases, and to explain a cause postulates and different types of pathogens okay so this is what we are going to study i believe we did uh, we started the topic in our last lesson right so let's recap the contents which we did in the last class and then move ahead with the topic uh, we did this case wl already what do you see on the screen here which type of cell is it Does it look like a plant cell, an animal cell, or a bacterial cell to you? Bacterial cell. Yes, it is a bacterial cell. It is a cell, which is very basic, meaning it does not have the other uh, complex organelles like the eukaryotic cells have. Though it is, it has a cell membrane and the cytoplasm in it, even the nucleus is absent in a basic prokaryotic cell in which the genetic material is loosely present in the cytoplasm. And you can recognize it with the presence of this flagella, which are present that you say it is a bacterial cell. So let's discuss about the topic. Uh, uh, starting with germs, they cause many diseases in humans. Okay, so before this, I want you to watch a video about the pathogens and the diseases they cause. Okay, so do let me know if the audio is clear. Give me a moment. Okay, so let's start. What they are exactly. Is the audio clear, ladies? And cause infect. Yes. Thank you. A pathogen is a microorganism that can cause disease. In this video, we are going to discover what they are exactly, how they can spread and cause infection and how their spread can be reduced or prevented. Pathogens may be viruses, bacteria, protists, or fungi. They are just microorganisms that can cause disease. Bacteria are microscopic. Even the biggest are only 10 micrometers long, which is minuscule. Once bacteria find their way into the body, they release toxins that make us feel ill. Examples of bacteria infections are cholera, typhoid, food poisoning and gonorrhea. Although bacteria are very small, viruses are much, much smaller. Again, they are among the smallest organisms we know of. Viruses not only enter your body, but they enter into cells and reproduce inside cells. They reproduce hundreds of thousands of times. 
and eventually cause the host cell to explode. The virus then passes out through the airwaves, bloodstream, or other route and can spread through populations. Examples of viral infections are the flu, influenza, measles, mumps, the common cold, and AIDS. Of the thousands of species of fungi, a few can cause human diseases. They can cause minor skin conditions all the way up to life-threatening diseases. Some common fungal skin conditions are athlete's foot and ringworm. They are contagious and can pass from person to person through direct contact or less commonly through contact with common surfaces. There are some opportunistic fungal diseases that can take advantage when the immune system is lowered for other reasons such as cancer or AIDS. Protists are single cell organisms. Some protists dysentery, which is an intestine infection and results in severe diarrhea. Protist pathogens can also be parasitic. They live in or on other organisms and cause harm. Malaria is an example of a protist pathogen that lives in the blood and is transmitted by mosquitoes. Watch the second part of this video to see how pathogens are spread Okay, so that was the video which shows about how the pathogens that cause the various diseases in humans. I hope the video was and how the clear. Transmission. What did you understand from the video? Who's going to talk about it? We have to many for the various pathogens mentioned in the video. Mm -hmm. Pathogens like bacteria, virus, fungi, protists were uh, mentioned in the video and a few diseases which they caused were also given as examples, right? So uh, the germ theory, according to it, microscopic particles, they cause certain diseases, okay? And these microscopic particles, they are of two types. They can be either infectious or non-infectious. Obviously, the infectious diseases are caused by the infectious particles and these infectious diseases can be passed from one person to another. And these diseases, they are called by, caused by germs, usually the bacteria and viruses. Okay, so we know how infectious the bacterial diseases and viral diseases are. We very well know with the current pandemic, which is going on, the, the COVID-19, which is also a viral infection, right? Similarly, flu and polio are also infectious diseases, which are caused by various viruses. Okay, now all the diseases which can be spread from one person to another, be it by touch or by body fluids or by uh, by through air are known as the infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases are impossible to pass from one person to another uh, by touching or by uh, through air or by being with that person in one room. No, they can be only inherited uh, through uh, the genes, meaning if, you, if your parents or your ancestors have those diseases, you might also inherit them, like cancer or heart disease are examples of non-infectious diseases, okay? So these are the two different kinds of diseases according to the germ theory. Germ theory states that microscopic particles, they cause certain diseases microscopic part microscopic particles meaning the microorganisms like the bacteria viruses the fungi they cause the diseases so this germ theory was proposed by lewis pasture and it led to rapid advances in understanding diseases okay so once he proposed the germ theory this we studied already uh, in the last lesson as to how it was uh, how the people used to uh, used to think the diseases were spreading back in 490 AD and then uh, when 18, in 1857 the germ theory was proposed by Lewis Pasteur he hypothesized uh, he hypothesized that uh, maybe the diseases could be spread by microscopic organisms which cannot be seen with the naked eye and after the germ theory was in Invented. There were many, many more inventions after that. Like Joseph Lister, he finds that cleaning his surgical tools reduces the patient's infections. So after Louis Pasteur invented the discovery, later many other discoveries were done. For example, like the cause postulates, they also supported the theory. Uh, the cause invented the disease-causing agents are known as 
pathogen. So it was Koch who gave this name pathogens to all the disease causing agents. In 1883, the Koch postulates were invented. Robert Koch, he finds four conditions that prove a pathogen causes a disease. Okay, later in 1900s, applying an antiseptic antiseptic technique cities around the world start treating drinking water with chlorine reducing the cases of cholera later it was discovered in 1900s so water may be a cause for passing of the various infections okay because cholera was a very great pandemic during those times many people used to die of cholera and later they uh, they thought that maybe water can be one of the reasons for the transmission of this disease so they started treating water applying the antiseptic technique um, and they started a uh, chlorine treating the water and this of course reduced a lot of cases of cholera okay then gradually in 1928 the antibiotics were invented it was sir alexander fleming who first discovered penicillin okay so penicillin it is an antibiotic which is given which uh, has the properties of killing or uh, stopping the infection in your body okay uh, penicillin is actually it is a fungus which is being infected into your body which has the, which has the capability of stopping that particular uh, infection or disease or killing those bacteria okay later in 1955 the vaccines were invented first the polio vaccine was invented jonas sox vaccine against polio it became available and the disease was eliminated in us in 1994 girls do you all know what is polio have you ever seen a polio patient ladies okay so uh, these are the pictures of the polio vaccine being given let me show you how polio looks like okay so this is the condition known as polio wherein uh, the uh, the legs they don't have the uh, the strength and the ability okay so they are uh, the polio patients they cannot walk their legs are very very weak and they are incapable of walking they do not function like the normal legs okay so this was very much uh, 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 popular infection or the polio disease was very very much uh, uh, infecting the people back in 1900s till the polio vaccine was invented so polio vaccine was invented in 1955 which worked really well in, in the eradication or eliminating the disease in the us in 1994 so till date the vaccines which are given to the infants right from zero to four years of age we uh, give them polio vaccine influenza vaccine and the various vaccines for various deadly diseases like smallpox chickenpox mumps measles for all these uh, vaccine is given okay so vaccines were invented in 1995 eradicating most of the fatal diseases or the diseases which can cause serious uh, uh, mal uh, deformities or malformations in the body of the patients then uh, in 2002 the new diseases were uh, started uh, infecting the people like the SARS you know SARS also is a respiratory disease like COVID-19 which was first uh, uh, prevailed the first noticed in 2002 a disease that affects the respiratory system it spring up in china also this disease was from china itself then again in 2005 the polio came back the worldwide efforts increased to vaccinate people against polio and the polio virus re-emerges in fewer than 10 people in the u.s course people were not taking vaccines very seriously uh, even today there is a debate whether vaccines should be given to the children or no because basically whenever we are vaccinating what are we doing we are injecting a weakened pathogen of polio into your body okay though this weakened pathogen they can it cannot cause any disease but it can uh, stop uh, or fight back against uh, the bacteria which can cause you polio if it starts invading your body okay so this weakened pathogen it does not have the ability to cause you any disease though many people still uh, debate about it that the weakened pathogen though it is weakened it should not be uh, injected into a healthy baby's body because the baby is as it is healthy and we are uh, infecting the baby by uh, vaccinating it with the weakened various weakened pathogens 
uh, I disagree with it because the, the vaccines are very, very important in fighting the diseases because this weakened pathogen, if it is present in your body, it might fight back the disease if you may get infected in future. Though it will not cause any any uh, uh, problem to the healthy person into whom you're injecting. Okay, so a few people were not getting vaccinated for polio. So it again sprung, uh, sprung back in 2005. And we know about the SARS, uh, it was also spreading like COVID-19, it was also a respiratory infection and uh, the treatment, uh, of course, there was no uh, particular treatment even for SARS, uh, there, there was no vaccine invented. Uh, or no antibiotics work because it is a viral infection. And of course, vaccine was uh, like now COVID-19 vaccine is still under construction. Same way uh, uh, the vaccine for SARS has not been invented so far. Okay, ladies. So what did cause uh, postulates? Uh, how do they help? How did they help the germ theory is cause uh, he decided to try making healthy animals sick by injecting them with pathogens from a sick animal. He found out that four conditions must be met before one can be certain that a particular pathogen causes disease. So his conditions are called the cause postulate. So what are those four conditions? The pathogen must be present in every case in which a disease is found. Then the pathogen must be isolated and grown in the lab to make a pure uncontaminated culture and healthy animals infected with the pure culture of the pathogen must become sick with the same disease again and the pathogen must be re-isolated and cultured from the newly sick animals. Now this pathogen must be the same type as the original pathogen. So he used these four principles known as the cause postulates in order to find out which pathogen caused the particular disease and this was very very helpful in the making of vaccines in future. So this is how the cause uh, postulates also contributed to the germ theory and uh, it was his contribution to the germ theory. So there are different types of pathogens as we watched just now in the video. They are the bacteria, uh, the, uh, the bacteria, they cause illnesses by destroying the cells. Uh, we know how the uh, bacteria cause the infection in the body. What do they do? They release toxins into the body. Toxins are the chemicals uh, which uh, release inside the body and they cause the infection. They, they multiply in the body inside. So bacteria are single celled organisms. Some bacteria release chemicals that are toxic to their host and others they destroy the healthy cells. Food poisoning is also caused by bacteria. So there are many, many bacterial diseases and infections, including the food poisoning, which are caused in the humans and also in animals. Uh, the bacteria are basically a microscopic prokaryotic organisms, which are responsible for many, many diseases and infections in the body. Next, talking about viruses, you already studied about viruses in detail in your grade 10, if you remember. Okay, so viruses are nothing but a strand of DNA or RNA which is surrounded by a protein coat. You don't have any structure in virus like the bacterial uh, cell. You don't have any structure apart from the genetic material. That is why it is very, very difficult to make antibiotics against virus. They are so, so microscopic, more microscopic than bacteria, and they can be seen only with the help of an electron microscope. And viruses enter the healthy cells and take them over. We have studied this under lysogenic and lytic infections in your grade 10. Do you remember, ladies, how the, how the viruses cause infections? Yeah. You remember we studied about lysic and uh, lytic and lysogenic infections in your grade 10. Okay, so that is how the healthy cells that are infected and they produce more viruses. The viruses, that is how they multiply. The viruses cause many, many deadly diseases and illnesses starting from a common cold to, to severe, to very major diseases or fatal diseases like AIDS, COVID-19, uh, uh, the SARS, all these are various viral infections or diseases. Now talking about the next pathogen, which is fungi, you can see the picture of a mushroom over here. The fungi, they can be multicellular or single cell. Yeast is the only fungi which is, sing which is single cellular. All the rest of them are multicellular and eukaryotic. Fungi, they can have one cell or more than one cell. They can invade the healthy cells and take the cells nutrients because fungi, we also study that they are parasitic or saprophytic meaning they live as parasites or other organisms, be it plants or animals. And they also are saprophytic, meaning they live on the dead organic matter. 
okay so this is how they get the nutrition fungal infections usually occur in places that are warm and damp for example athlete's foot is a fungus that invades skin cells between the toes we also discuss about these fungal infections when we were talking about the uh, fungus like protists and also about fungal diseases under our chapter 19 uh, wherein we discuss about various fungal infections and diseases caused by various fungi like the athlete's foot and uh, be it also the various fungal diseases in plants all of these are they are uh, caused by the fungi okay now moving to the protozoa protozoans are single celled organisms uh, they are the uh, we also have the animal like protists which are also named protozoa the protists which we studied under chapter 19 are single celled organisms they can prey on healthy body cells and one of the examples of the disease caused by protists is malaria remember ladies we studied under chapter 19 malaria is a uh, a disease which is caused by which is the bacterium which causes malaria mhm mm you should be able to tell this we just now did this topic you also studied it under your quiz 1 what causes malaria which bacteria girls did you forget so fast did you forget everything about chapter 19 we did just a few weeks ago no can i ask the question again which uh, type of a pathogen causes malaria mhm mm What causes malaria ladies you just now studied under your animal like protus it is caused by bacterium plasmodium which is spread by the female anaphylis mosquito right malaria is a disease uh, of the rbc uh, that is caused by a protus uh, miss is it plasmodium <coughs> yes yes of course thank you so much it is caused by plasmodium and it is spread from one person to another through the bite of a female anaphylis mosquito okay thank you so much so this is a disease which is caused by a pathogen which is a protist okay now talking about the various parasites parasites meaning they live on the body of other animals or human beings parasites are multicellular organisms they are the organisms that grow on a host and feed off it like the leeches give me more examples of parasites girls can you give me a few examples of parasites um, please um the the fungi on the leaves yeah you can say fungi are the parasites then the various worms the leeches which live in our body the intestinal worms okay uh can we say the ticks and mites which live on uh, the lice which live on our body are also parasites no why not because we have some in our eyelashes right but like nothing happens to them no i'm talking about the lice which feed on our blood lice the hair lice Oh. Yeah, the bed bugs, the lice, the ticks and mites which live on the bodies of the animals, all these are parasites because they live off us. They live on our human blood or animal blood. Okay? So such type of organisms which live on the bodies of other animals or uh humans are known as parasites. Some parasites they even kill their host. uh the intestinal worms are one kind of parasite which can uh cause uh, fatal diseases and they can also kill the host uh you must all have also studied about the known about the intestinal worms uh have you ever done deworming have you ever got deworming done uh, maybe now or when you were young if you don't feel hungry 
if you don't feel like eating at all then your parents must have taken to the hospital that this girl is not eating anything and the doctor will prescribe you deworming okay that means it is a medicine which cleans your intestine if there are any worms meaning if there are worms in your intestine they uh, feed on the food which you eat and you don't feel hungry nor the nutrition which you are eating it will cause any benefit to your body because you are not directly getting the nutrition the worms are feeding on it okay so sometimes if there are intestinal worms they will be deworms they will come out of your uh, uh, the feces which you pass once you get the deworming done it is very very important especially for uh, children between the ages of 6 to 12 cause they eat a lot of junk uh, and uh, a lot of uh, foods which are very high in sugars and also they may be susceptible to intestinal worms so they get this deworming done so that if there are any worms in the intestine they can be cleaned up and again and the children will feel hungry back because it's very very important for the growth and nutrition okay girls so this is about the parasites now in this table you can see the different pathogen that causes common infectious diseases you can see the disease hiv it is caused by a virus how it spreads it is through the body fluids you know how it spreads it is through a uh, cont- uh, the mixing up of the body fluids like semen or blood or any other fluid which you, if you come into contact with the uh, patient then uh, affected body systems is a immune system it gets affected when your immune system is attacked you become so weak that not only you get HIV, you already are uh, infected with hiv along with that you get uh, susceptible or you get many more infections along with hiv for example if there is an hiv uh, aids patient now in this situation he will also get covid 19 or any other infections which are prevailing at that point of time so when his body gets attacked with too many diseases his immune system it collapses and he dies this is what happens in aids okay and the deaths annually with aids are 3 la- uh, it is 31 lakh deaths annually happen due to hiv or aids then the next disease is pneumonia it is also caused by virus and also by bacteria you know it is also a respiratory uh, infection uh, how it spreads it is airborne affected body systems are respiratory systems and there are annually 20 lakh deaths which happen due to pneumonia and also tuberculosis you know what is tuberculosis it is also a respiratory and digestive infection caused by bacteria it is also airborne and affected body systems are respiratory and digestive systems and 18 lakh people die due to tuberculosis every year malaria again it is caused due to a pathogen uh, protozoa plant, uh, it is animal like protus it spreads through the bite of an anapheles mosquito affected body systems are digestive circulatory and muscular systems and 1 lakh uh, i'm sorry 10 lakh people die of malaria every year coming to hepatitis b it is also caused by virus it is spread through contaminated food and water the digestive and immune systems are affected and 10 lakh people die annually due to this then coming to measles it is also a viral infection airborne respiratory and nervous systems are damaged and 5 lakh people get uh, die annually due to this and influenza again it is a viral disease airborne and also spread through direct contact it is a respiratory disease and 4 lakh people die annually so uh, so do we get vaccinated for all these diseases which are mentioned on the table here girls can we get vaccinated for all of this no yes <laughs> we get vaccine no. uh, yes the babies who are vaccinated from 0 to 4 years they are vaccinated against hiv pneumonia tuberculosis malaria hepatitis b measles influenza all these diseases against in order to fight these even polio uh, ma- uh, smallpox chickenpox all these vaccines are given to the children between 0 to 4 years in order to protect them in order to protect protect our future generations from such diseases inshallah now if the covid-19 uh, vaccine is also uh, released then the future generations will also be given covid-19 vaccine yes. okay yeah aren't there already vaccines for them i'm sorry aren't there already vaccines for covid 
No, no vaccines have been invented so far, but I heard that uh, uh, there is a vaccine uh, already made and is ready in Russia, I believe. Yes, I, I think also here. Also I here, know. I heard it, but there was news about it in the yeah. in the news channels, but there's nothing is revealed so far. I'm sure if uh, once the vaccine is ready, they will make it available to the common people. And all of them should be vaccinated as early as possible, inshallah, because you can see the second wave of COVID-19 now. Does that uh, mean we're going back to school? Inshallah, once we get the vaccine, you will be uh, coming back to school, inshallah. But that's not a treatment. It's like a prevention thing. Once you're vaccinated, then uh, don't you think you will be uh, fit enough to come to school back? Once you're vaccinated, then you will be protected against it. You will not get infected with it again. But what if someone has COVID? There is no treatment. Uh, it needs to be worked. It, uh, I, I believe it is being, uh, they are experimenting. Uh, they are conducting a lot of experiments on it, whether it is working or no. Okay, so they need to still uh, do a lot of experiments and then a final vaccine will be released, which inshallah will work. Okay, so they will come up with it inshallah as early as possible so that our life can get back to normal. And uh, if it is available in Saudi Arabia, then they will make it public as early as possible, inshallah. I don't have the latest info. What even I heard was it the vaccine is ready. Uh, but if it is ready, inshallah, they will make it available to all the people as early as possible. Okay. Okay, Fatina. All right, ladies, that was about the table which we just uh, mentioned about. And... Uh, the next subtopic is pathogens that can enter the body in different ways. Okay, they can enter through your respiratory system. They can just parasites. They can just enter your body from anywhere, or maybe the most of the diseases like the uh, malaria, they are spread by the bite of the female Anopheles mosquito. Or we also studied about the various uh, diseases which are caused by the bite of various mites and ticks. Okay, so how the pathogen enter your body? There are various ways in which they do that. Pathogens, they can be transferred by either direct or indirect contact. Okay, direct contact meaning whenever you're contact with the patient, in contact with the patient, you can get it. Or indirectly, they can be passed by the bite of the uh, mosquitoes or maybe due to infected water which you're drinking uh, because of the air. And also some of the uh, infections or diseases, I'm sorry, they can be hereditary which you can inherit from your ancestors. So indirect contact, it does not require touching an infected individual. The pathogens, they can enter the body in different ways and pathogens, they have to enter the body before they can make a person sick. Of course, without the pathogen entering your body, it cannot make you sick, isn't it? So pathogens can be spread in several ways. Direct contact means that the pathogen is spread through physical touch. For example, rabies, it can be transmitted when a sick animal bites a healthy one. And HIV can be transmitted during sexual intercourse or while sharing infected needles. All right, so the, all these are examples of direct contact. When you come into touch directly with the patient or anything which is related to the patient, then you get this disease immediately. Uh, so can we call COVID-19 as a direct contact, as a disease which is spread through direct contact? Girls? Hello? Oh yes, COVID-19, it can also be spread through direct contacts. If you get into touch with the uh, person, uh, if you are uh, uh, not touching directly, but if you're in the same room, if you're using the, uh, uh, if you're sharing their food, or even if you're speaking to them directly without the mask, then you can get infected due to direct contact. So that is also an example of direct contact. Okay, also uh, there are uh, some of the uh, diseases which are spread by indirect contact is by uh, touching the surfaces on which the pathogens can survive for a longer period of time. 
okay for example uh, even uh, the covid 19 it was uh, mentioned that it can stay on a particular surface for how much time can it say stay ladies what did we study under covid 19 on a particular surface how much for how much time can it survive doesn't it depend i'm sorry it depends on the surface it depends on the surface for example if uh, the person has uh, uh, visited the hospital okay so he he was in the patient room wherein the blood test was being done uh, then uh, after him the room was not sanitized and there was the next patient who entered the same room so can he get infected with covid 19 if it's in a specific time frame like I yeah think yeah it can stay until like four days right Yes, yes, that is what was said. A few days, a COVID nineteen can stay, ah, uh, can be alive on that particular surface. Okay, the patient if is getting into contact with any pen or anything which is using a laptop or a table or a bed or anything, then ah, uh, the COVID nineteen virus can stay on that surface for a few hours or also twenty four to forty eight hours, I believe. Okay, so it's very very important to sanitize the area. That is why they are giving a lot of importance on sanitizing and using of gloves and masks and all, because it can be transmitted easily. Okay, so for example, the fungi that causes the athlete's foot, it can survive on a bathroom floor for some time. So pathogens that spread by indirect contact can be passed in the air or by eating contaminated food. And some pathogens are spread by vectors. Now, what is the meaning of a vector? A vector is anything that can carry a pathogen and pass it to other organism. So, uh, in the spread of the virus of the uh, malaria, the bacteria, the protist which causes malaria, the plasmodium, it is uh, spread from the contaminated person or the animal to the other other person by the bite of a female Anopheles mosquito. So, the mosquito does not cause malaria, but it is a transmitter for this malaria. So, it can uh, take the blood from an infected person and it can inject it uh, the bacteria into the blood of a healthy person. So, here the 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 anopheles mosquito it is uh, playing the role of a transmitter so vector is anything that can carry a pathogen and pass it to other organisms vectors can include insects birds and other animals mosquitoes can carry west nile virus in 1300s the black death or bubonic plague was carried by the fleas of rats you know how plague occurred have you heard okay it's 157 already girls i've lost track of time i'm sorry Uh, so this is about the topic. Inshallah, it's almost done. We shall discuss the rest of the topic. Only a few slides are left, and then solve the worksheet for this topic in our next class. Inshallah. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you so much. There are twenty-five attendees have taken the attendance. See you tomorrow, Inshallah, or in our next class. Have a great day ahead. Bye bye. Yeah.